welcome to lecture number 35 so in this lecture we'll talk about SCADA in power systems uh, in the last class uh, in one of my presentation one one of my lecture uh, in power system automation I have introduced SCADA in power system so here we'll talk about SCADA in power system in more detail so let us see SCADA in power systems SCADA systems are in use in all spheres of power system operations starting from uh, generation transmission generation to transmission to distribution and to utilization of electrical energy the SCADA functions can be classified as uh, basic and advanced application functions. Already we talked about this in the last lecture. The basic SCADA functions include the data acquisition. These are the basic SCADA functions, data acquisition, remote control, then human uh, machine interface, and historical data analysis and report writing which are common to all spheres of a SCADA application and generation transmission and distribution systems SCADA application functions we can see here these are the special uh, functions or you can say the major applications of the SCADA supervisory control and data acquisition system here can see here uh, the source station automation is important and here we have two uh, aspects one is the distribution aspect and other aspect is your automation of generation and your energy management system which is associated with the transmission system so these are the special applications in generation we have uh, many special applications from economic load dispatch to automatic generation control many other aspects in order to make the generation automation uh, to work and then the in transmission uh, system transmission system where it is operating as a system operator there uh, it, it all SCADA is also used for energy management application which is the most important application you can say and then in the distribution side the SCADA application is for distribution automation and distribution management system as well so uh, let us uh, see how is how the SCADA is implemented let us talk about the open system need and advantages SCADA systems are complex and they are very complex and require a variety of hardware and software seamlessly integrated into a system that can perform the monitoring and control operation of a large process involved so it's really a complex uh, process SCADA so communication among devices plays the key role to successful SCADA implementation and in and also in in the modern power system it plays very important role traditionally most vendors in automation scenario established their own unique that is we, we say proprietary way to communicate between devices getting two vendors proprietary devices to communicate properly to a complex and expense it, it is a com complex and expensive task it will take two vendors uh, different components in SCADA it is difficult to integrate both for communication purpose so the possible solution to the problem of problem is through two basic approaches so the possible solution is the first is to we can buy the buy everything related to SCADA from one vendor and then get the vendors to agree on a standard communication interface so we have to say to the vendor that 
make your communication protocol standard protocol so that other components from other vendors we can accommodate and we can implement later on the second approach is the fundamental objective of the open system this this second approach that is getting vendors to agree on a standard communication interface is the fundamental objective of the open system movement let us see the components of the scada system scada is an integrated uh, technology composed of the following four components there are four major components you can see here the first component is your master station where all your uh, controller ma computers used for control action uh, and also a data acquisition purpose is there then second one is your communication system through which it communicates with the field device through rtu rtu is the third component and obviously there are field comp field equipments and we have hmi hmi is, so we have four major components one is master station communication system rtu and hmi so these four components plays important role in making a scada system so field equipment doesn't come under the scada system because it is implemented in the field to acquire data and to send the uh, signal to the field equipment so major equipment is rtu and rtu is the remote terminal unit so it's very important it's like eyes ears and hands in the human body so what the eyes and ears in the human body does it acquires the data from the field so likewise here rtu acquires data from it acts like eyes and ears to acquire to to acquire data from the field and also it acts as hand like it it gets the control signal from the master station and it actuates you can see a human body here so it collects signal from the field and processed and sends to the master station so after collecting the signal from the field it processes so in a, in the format by that by which it can communicate to the master station then it communicates and the master station sends control signal to hands to act so it also acts like hands now it is uh, intelligent electronic devices are replacing rtus so ieds it is a very popularly known as ieds they are replacing uh, remote terminal units second major component is your communication system this refers to the communication channels employed between the field equipment and the master station that is between the rtu and the master station the bandwidth of the channel limits the speed of communication so and third component is a master station it, it is a collection of computers peripherals and appropriate input output io systems that enable the operators to monitor the state of the power system uh, and to control it through the master station and fourth one is your human uh, machine interface that is human machine interface is your it refers to the interface required for the interaction between the master station and operators or users of the scada system so it's like a uh, it's like a screen through which the human the operator gets the information and again it sends information through this is the human machine interface interface it's a computer system remote terminal in detail we'll see the remote terminal unit how it is how it acts so in we have you can see here the remote terminal unit block this is this gets the data from the field equipment and converts or processes the data in the communication packets so then it sends the data in packets 
to the master station and master station the data is being converted okay but now it is as the id is replacing rtu so here id also so on similarly id also id they collect data from field equipment and process it and they send the data through data concentration it is known as data concentration to the master station so cef is nothing but we call it communication front end or front end processor so components of rio we can see here uh, the, this is your rtu block the whole block is your rtu right and rtu and it is connected it is communicating to the power system it collects data and it sends signal to the power system for control action so it has power supply system which supplying power to different subsystems here we have three different subsystems one is communication subsystem logic subsystem then termination subsystem so these three subsystems uh, along with the hmi it works together so it this test and hmi really it is there for testing purpose for maintenance purpose of the rtu so this is your rtu and here we have scada communication networks through which it uh, communicates with the master station this is all about your rtu uh, remote terminal units now we'll see the intelligent electronic devices how it is uh, more in, how it is replacing the rtus so the industry standard definition of an id the definition says that any device incorporating one or incorporating one or more processors with the capability to receive or send data or control from or to an external source for example electronic multifunction meters digital relays and controllers etc so this is the definition of ied ieds have been deployed extensively in power automation systems recently and the shift from rtus to ied is evident due to the integration of interoperability features of ieds IEDs are introduced in the early 1980s with microprocessor based control features the deployment of IEDs is revolutionizing the protection substation and distribution automation data capture and analysis functions of an electric utility so really IED is helping in lot of uh, fields like in protection automation and substation distribution automation data capturing so the protection uh, relay migrated from single function conventional electromechanical types to multifunction microprocessor based relays and started incorporating different protection functions into same relay rather than using the individual relays for each application however ied revolution started when other functionalities like accurate voltages and current phase measurement waveform capture and metering were being incorporated into the relay so id revolution really happened after the after the invention after the disc, uh, invention of uh, phase measurement unit so it is in fact uh, integrated with ieds so the growth in the communication infrastructure standardization of protocols and interoperability were major factors that lead to ied explosion ied packed with full control and monitoring capabilities and with analysis of fault report data can manage substations without him human intervention so the wrong tripping of the circuits can be avoided by utilizing ieds capabilities to full extent integration of ieds and proper analysis of fault data will lead to very short system restoration times after a blackout and the revenue losses of utilizes utilities will be very minimum in that case where the ieds are used 
we can see here that three aspects of IAD one is your external communication data processing and third one is IO measurement input output measurement in external communication we have various protocols so selectable protocol rapid response real-time data multiple ports in data processing we have protection uh, metering event recording fault recording application logic then discrete inputs analog inputs discrete outputs analog outputs right so these are all having uh, uh, selectable ratings so as per external communication data processing and io measurement we can see here for external communication when the selectable protocol is the external communication so the data protect processing is for the protection then at that time the io measurement is discrete inputs so in this way they are interrelated so the star uh, marked uh, applications are really in, in the old relays in case of old relays where the analog input output is required and it is related to protection obviously now you can see the different applications of intelligent electronic devices here for metering purpose monitoring purpose control purpose and protection purpose these are the four aspects of uh, IED where it is used you can see here uh, from master substation uh, how it is being uh, giving the communication along with the GPS signal GPS signal is required for synchronizing the data or synchronization synchronized measurement of the pages the IED brings a relay panel with many single function electromechanical relay control switches extensive wiring and much more into a single box in addition the IED handles additional features like self and external circuit monitoring real-time synchronization of the event monitoring local and substation data access programmable logic controller functionalities and an entire range of software tools for commissioning testing event reporting and fault analysis id hardware design utilizes draw out type of cards which is a great advantage as the replacement can be done easily without disconnecting the terminal wires and removing the id from the panel so there are a draw out cards where the data is being stored and that can be taken out and that can be analyzed in other computers in addition to the analog digital inputs outputs IID has the capability of waveform capture and disturbance analysis capability metering and demand values recording or other features in addition to uh, programmable logic capability of the IEDs that eliminates an additional PLC usage. Self and external circuit monitoring make the device extremely reliable and reduce downtown, downtime. So here we can see the structure of IED. Here there are various uh, uh, structures, control structure block, and different blocks are there and uh, on off functions on off functions are there right protection function control function programmable logic communication functions metering real-time clock self and external circuit monitoring so there are different uh, aspects involved in the iid so now a little bit we'll talk about the phaser measurement unit which is sometime it comes the external as uh, sometime it is embedded with the IED elect intelligent electronic device so a phaser measurement unit is a device that provides a, as minimum as a minimum synchrophaser and frequency measurements for one or more three phase AC voltage and or current waveforms so it measures the synchronized voltage and current waveforms the synchrophaser and the frequency values must meet the general definition and minimum accuracy required in the IEEE synchrophaser standard, standard AC 37.118, published in 2 
the device must provide a real time data output which conforms to c37.118.1 requirements so uh, the uh, terry boston the ceo of uh, pjm interconnection he says it's like going from x-ray to mri of the grid when we are implementing pmu motivation for synchronized measurements why we in fact need uh, synchronized measurement uh, so data from different locations are not captured at precisely the same time in in case of uh, rtu real time uh, a remote terminal even it's it is difficult to get a precisely synchronized data from all the buses however voltage power real power and reactive power normally do not change abruptly unless there is a large disturbance nearby systems monitoring is system monitoring is more critical during disturbance and transients faster synchronized data is needed to capture the dynamics it is really important to capture the dynamics to know wh what is the distance of the instability if this real time control is uh, possible only with real time simulation uh, situational awareness so you can see here the synchronized measurement in substation a and substation b so there are different location at distant uh, distance place and by synchronizing the sampling processes for different signals at substation a and b which may be hundreds of miles apart it is possible to put their phasers in the same phaser diagram so we can in a in a single screen we can see these two phasers together and we can see how they are behaving and how their how the angle the phase angle is changing when there when there is a particular when when the when the disturbance occurs in the system so from that we can easily monitor the system uh, system uh, position or system status very easily so instrumentation including a pmu here we can see here we have current transformer and potential transformer from pt and ct uh, the signals are being captured through pmu and there is gps antenna and pmu to synchronize this data and the data were sent to the uh, sent through the ieds to the master station so pmus can estimate or measure the following that is sequence voltages and currents phase voltages and currents frequency rate of change of frequency and circuit breaker switch status these things can be easily measured or uh, monitored synchro phase a little bit we'll see the fundamentals sampling sample the continuous voltage or current signal the figures will be here 12 points per cycle there is a sampling rate is 7 720 hours here right so use of df df is a discrete fourier series or dft discrete fourier transfer method transform method to compute the magnitude and phase of the signal so here uh, both DF, dfs or dft can be applied calculate uh, magnitude and phase of each phase of three phase quantity using one period of data reduces the effect of measurement noise so synchro phaser fundamentals again although theoretically one can get a data point on phase a another data point on phase b and a third data point on phase c to compute the positive sequence quantity the approach is prone to measurement noise so there is no standard phaser algorithm used by diff uh, different pmu manufacturers so there are different algorithms for estimation they use for measurement so most popular calculation most most phaser cal most phaser calculation in commercial pmu uses one to four cycle windows likely centering in the window to reduce noise some manufacturers use average value 
So some manufacturers they use average value over an even number of windows, two or maybe four. There is a latency in the PMU itself, number of cycles and processing time. Using the PMU from the same supplier at least provides consistency of the phasor algorithm. So if we we'll use the PMU from same supplier, same vendor, then at least it provides the consistency of the phasor estimation algorithm. So this is the basic block diagram of PMU. So here we can see we have uh, the analog inputs from CTs and PTs. We take from CTs and PTs, from CTs and PTs, we take the analog input and through anti-aliasing filter we check the aliasing uh, with respect to the sampling signal then it is fed to the AD converter then after converting to the digital uh, signal then it is fed to the phasor, process, phasor processor and it happened through the GPS receiver because we connect the collect the GPS signal and through a phase lock loop then then the digitized signal is sent through the modem to the master station to the master station so this is the process simple uh, process followed and there are different methods for approaches of, uh, algorithms used for in the phasor processor for estimating the phasors so we'll conclude the, the lecture here we discussed the role of SCADA in power systems and components and functions of the remote terminal unit then discussed IED requirements and the functions and also we discussed the introduction to PMU phasor measurement unit so we'll conclude here these are the references so major part of this uh, of this lecture is taken from this book the power system SCADA and smart grids CRC press by Mini Thomas and John D McDonald and few portions I have taken from Google Wikipedia and PGCL India so Thank you very much.